guys. Vibes. Vibes with the free things. Okay, so we got a lead vocal, a double pan to the right, a background vocal, a guitar track, a piano track, a bass track, and a drum track. That is a great foundation for a great song. I'm going to show you from start to finish how to produce your own music, how to produce a song right here in real time. So thanks for being here. I cannot wait to jump in. I'm Jamie Grace, by the way, and this is, an, uh, this is, <laughs> I'm Jamie Grace, and this is The Audio, a podcast for women and girls who love to create. Now, of course, anyone is welcome, but I remember growing up in the music industry, literally was full time by like 17 years old and <laughs> just not having a lot of like female engineers and producers that I could have these conversations with. So anyone's welcome, but I love to be able to share um, what I know and other resources where you can find out, of course, the many things I don't know with whoever is wanting to listen and might benefit from it. We're going to use um, a free software today. We're going to use something called GarageBand. Most people are familiar with it. It's like the free version of Logic, um, which is what I personally use. But there are so many DAWs, a digital audio workstation, I think, um, is what it stands for. There are so many different DAWs that you can use. So what I'm not going to do today is jump into too many specifics that are only relevant to GarageBand because I want this to be able to be something that can be applied if you're using Pro Tools, Audacity, or if you're using GarageBand on your phone or iPad, it'll definitely be a little bit different from what's happening on the computer. So the things we're going to go over today won't be too specific to GarageBand, but if you do have access to um, an Apple device, um, you can just go ahead and download it, um, which I know that's not the free part is like having to, you know, buy an Apple device, but uh, <laughs> hopefully um, this will be helpful. And a few other things I won't be able to tackle today are like songwriting and song structure, which I'll definitely take care of in a future um, episode of the audio, as well as gear. I talked about that a little bit in the first and second episodes of the audio, but I can jump more in um, to that if you guys would like in a future episode, just comment below. And I'm also not going to be covering mixing and mastering. Once you make a song, you can mix it or you can send it to someone to have it mixed and have all those levels adjusted, the drums higher, the bass lower, whatever it might need. And then mastering is like that final polished sound over the song. That's a, as much as we're going to jump into that today. I really want to talk about templates and how that can help you create an amazing workflow. One of the first things that I always want to do when I jump into my DAW is get started on the song get those ideas out, try some stuff, fail a couple times and see what's happening for the day. And you can definitely get started right away. But if you want, you can start a template, which is what we'll be doing in this video. We'll be creating a template so that every time you create, you don't have to worry about starting from scratch. You'll already have your customized settings in place in your own template. If you can get everything set up from the beginning, it'll save you a lot less stress and frustration and like temptation to throw your computer out the window um, in the long run. <laughs> We're gonna click um, new track and assuming that this is not instrumental, we're gonna click on an audio track, um, input one. Right here it says my internet is, my instrument, not internet, is connected with Universal Audio Thunderbolt. That is, um, my interface and so I'm going to click create and now we've got a vocal track. As you can see these green lines are moving and that's super exciting. That means that it hears you uh, or me. Uh, so if, if we bring this up a little bit um, around like into more of the positive numbers. Um, you can see a little bit of yellow and then it'll get orange and red. Um, that's called like clipping or uh, people use a lot of different words to describe that, but you don't want that. <laughs> um, green is a great area. I tend to record my vocals somewhere around negative six, negative two. It just really depends on what um, I want out of that exact project. Um, but you definitely don't want it to get in the yellow red zone. You want to bring that down a little bit. Another thing that you'll notice here is panning. You can pan to the left speaker, you can pan to the right speaker, um, or you can just be smack dab in the middle. So what I'm going to do is I just double tapped that and, or double clicked that. And, um, I'm going to change that to lead. Oh, lead. Wheel. Cool. Mm, I love this. I'm, <laughs> <laughs> My typing is so weird. Um, and then I'm going to do Command D, which in most settings, 
Um, in most DAWs, like Command D or I think Windows D would be like to duplicate that track. So now I've got two tracks. If I click on this one, this is the one that's hot or the one that's live. Those are both terms you might hear occasionally. Um, if I click here, this is the one that's active. If I click here, now this is the one that's active. And as you can see, those green lines in the second lead vocal are slowly dissipating. So I'm going to change this. We do not want them to be <laughs> um, the same title. That will very much throw you off. So what you can do is you can say um, lead vocal double. And then we'll take this and we'll pan, oh, and we'll pan it all the way to the left. And then we will duplicate it again. And um, I mean, we'll just put an R for right. I don't know. It's <laughs> You can name it whatever you want to name it. But now you basically have your lead vocal, your double, um, and then the, another double for the right side. I'll put a tiny little video um, at the end of this from like my TikTok and everything. Or I think I put it on YouTube shorts as well. Um, that's why you should stack your vocal which is basically just like putting um, more than one of the same vocal. And that just there, that was um, Elizai. I don't even know if that's how you pronounce it, but he's a lo-fi artist that I really love. Um, and his music is my like alarm clock to do stuff. <laughs> okay, so we have the vocal, which is great. Um, you might also want, well, just, just, just because we'll do like a BGV and it'll be a background vocal. We'll turn that down just a little bit. Now, if you really want to get particular with this kind of stuff, I'm going to show you how I do this. If you guys would ever like to see my basic template that I use for my songs, I will totally share that with you. Um, this is how I do all of them. I start it with VO because it's voice or vocal. I learned this from a producer DJ by the name of Dibs. He was very much involved in... Um, all my music from what 2017 to 2021 I think um, he's still a good buddy friend of the family um, and yeah we love that dude so he taught me that because he was mixing and mastering a lot of my stuff and he was like I would really appreciate if it was organized like this and I just liked the system a lot so I kept it um, so now we have these vocal patterns now, or these vocal tracks. Now, again, the reason why we're doing this is because when you go in to record your song, you don't want to have to do this every single time. If, if that's your vibe, let me, let me not say, well, you don't want to do this. I don't know, you, I don't know what you'd be doing on Tuesday. Uh, you might be like, oh yes, I love redoing it every time. Great. I'm trying to help, <laughs> trying to help as much as I can go ahead and get this set up. Um, so that you don't have to do this every time. Now, if you like to have keyboard or piano, you can do something like KY. Again, learn that from Dibs. D uh, KY, and then we're just going to do piano. I'm going to bring this down a little bit. And then let's just name another one. So each of these tracks here, these these two that both say piano, these are, um, like, these are called virtual instrument tracks. And you can do anything, drums, keys, bass. So let's say we've got piano now, um, and now we're gonna do BA, and we're gonna do bass. Now, I still put the BA in front of that, even though I just put bass, because I might have one that says, later on the line, you might wanna do like BA, and then have um, one that says 808, and then BA, and then it's an upright bass, BA, bass one, bass two. You, you never know how many basses <laughs> you're gonna need in a song um so I do you know it, for this one we're just gonna keep it super simple for each one but just know the opportunity the possibilities are endless that's why you gotta make stuff all the time because there's so many ideas um so that's with piano bass and oh of course how could I forget old faithful my bff guitar so this is like a basic excuse me, I don't know who that was. We all know I don't burp. I'm a lady. Um, so this is just like basic stuff. So when we go to, um, you know, guitar and then we're going to go over here, you see this library every time we start a virtual track instrument, um, a virtual instrument track, this library pops up because it's just so nosy. It's always trying to get in their business. So you're going to go to your library and then click guitar and 
just pick acoustic guitar. And this is, ba this basically just means that this is now, um, the sound that we want to use for this project. We'll get to that in a second. Um, and then keyboard piano. Okay. Like let's pick a piano. Actually it's already on. Well, no, I want it to be on grand piano. That is always one of my favorite sounds. Did I forget to mention that all of this is included? If I'm not mistaken, this is with all DAWs. Um, but there are so many things you can buy, but there are also so many things you can get for free. And all of these sounds are included in the software. And so even if you don't like the way th these sounds sound particularly, j use them anyway to get in the habit of mixing and adjusting and playing and learning and and get in build those habits right and then as you grow you can buy more instruments you can buy more virtual instruments I have purchased quite a few and I love them but a lot of times I go back and I watch I use the um this the stock creation the stock files <laughs> the stock instruments because that's what I want to hear so um yeah like just make sure you play with all of the free stuff you can <laughs> before going out and spending money on plugins and stuff like that. Because before, and plugins and virtual insurance, before you know it, too many things, too many things out there you could get. So, what we're doing now is <laughs> we're just picking a random bass um, and then drums. Now, um, GarageBand has a lot of drum things. A lot of drum things <laughs> so we won't be able to jump into all of that today um and to be honest I'm not even really familiar with how all of that works um because I'm, I'm honestly a little bit I haven't used GarageBand in quite a while but again it's a great software my um I was about to say my sous chef <laughs> my sous my shoe my sous chef but that's not even what I'm trying to say my my cousin who is insanely talented and could maybe we'll just call her like my PA or something. She just comes and hangs out with me in the studio for a bit. She only uses GarageBand on her phone. And I'm so excited about the producer that she is and will continue to be. I'm so proud of her. And she's using all free stuff. So guys, vibes, vibes with the free things. Okay, so we got a lead vocal, a double pan to the right, a background vocal, a guitar track, a piano track, a bass track, and a drum track. That is a great foundation for a great song. A few key things, I'm gonna close this library again because it's up in my business. A few key things that we're just gonna circle back to um, that we never circled to, so I don't know why I said circle back. Up here, this one, two, three, four, that means if you hover over it, it'll actually pop up and say like that's a count in. So if you press record, you heard that one, two, three, four. The sound might be horrendous to you, and I get that click tracks can be very annoying to deal with, but they're very essential. So you just gotta deal with it. Cause some man, maybe some woman way back in the day was like, might as well, and it was a good idea. So we're gonna stick with it. And then this is to hear um that's the the like literally what a metronome looks like. And that is to um and also called a click but that's literally what a metronome looks like. That is if you want to hear it throughout the recording. Um, so if you're playing the song, you probably want to turn that off. Um, but if you are recording the song, you probably want to turn that on. Um, that is one of the few things where I am like, is like a non-negotiable is using a click track. Some people didn't like Johnny Cash. Um, a lot of it because I think that it just wasn't as common back then, but also because he was a rebel. So I'm not saying don't be a rebel. <laughs> I'm just saying use a click track. <laughs> okay. And, and that I, I will almost never, I, I hate absolutes and creativity. I hate it, but click tracks are great. Um, okay. So what we're going to do is, uh, you know, just go to guitar and you can have, you can have, uh, there's a little keyboard you can type in here where it shows this keyboard on screen. Now I have this tiny little MIDI keyboard on my desk where if I were to do this, like, it 
it plays the notes. It's, you know, kind of sounds like a plucking guitar if you're kind of like. It, it, it sounds like a guitar. Uh, it does. And so, uh, but again, we're using all free stuff today. Focus. <laughs> so you can click to make it look like this as well or this. Um, and that is how you, then when you click through the virtual instruments, that is how you will get um, different uh, sounds and stuff like that. We've got a BPM up here of, I'm pointing again, of 120. Um, I'm a just, I, I want like 140. And it's in the it's in the key of C. Oops. Okay. Double click that and then 140. Great. Um, and that is the speed of which the song and the metronome will go, right? If you ever struggle with like where should it go, just put in a number and then press this um, enter to go to the beginning and then press space bar. And then you can kind of hear like the speed of it. Oh, oh. Oh, I'm jamming along with the metronome. You see what I mean? You can vibe the, you can vibe with, with, with what the speed is going to be like. Um, so I want to like, oh, I just, okay. I got to have myself. Cause remember how we said we are going to make sure that we take care of ourselves when it comes to workflow. Um, and th I'm doing the thing that I said at the beginning, I like to do, I like to do this. <laughs> I like to just jump into the song. Um, and we're supposed to be saving this as a template so that we don't cause ourselves anxiety and stress and unnecessary work that we're not interested in in the future. Um, so that's what we're supposed to be doing. So we are going to click file. Um, now, in Logic, if you go to save as, right under it, it says save as a template. And I love that about Logic. I don't see that in GarageBand. I do believe that there that is possible in every DAW, but it just might look a little bit different. So you might have to type in on YouTube, create a template in Pro Tools, right? And it'll kind of give you the, the specifics for whatever DAW you're using. So I've, I've tried to kind of learn this a little bit, but you click Save As, um, and then it'll open your GarageBand folder or wherever you've designated it to go. And you're gonna, I'm just gonna type in, um, the audio, actually, no, I'm not. What I usually do with my templates is I name them by month. Um, so I'll put like June, 2023. And because I hope that I've learned something new by July. If I haven't, I'm gonna still use June. And that's my business. Um, if I think it's going to be a slow year, I'll put 2023 and then I'll just be my template. If I'm not sure, I'll do it by the month, by the spring, by the what are those? The seasons. I'm a homeschool mom. Aren't you worried? Um, but the seasons, I got to teach my kid the right word. Um, and I'll be like fall 2023, <laughs> but it's not fall. So let's just put June <laughs> 2023. Um, and that is now a template. Now it doesn't say template. Um, it may, maybe I could have done that, but I'll show you this. We're going to go now into Finder. So this is that file that we just made, right? What I'd recommend if you're using GarageBand, other people who use GarageBand more often might have a different recommendation for you. Um, but what I would recommend is just duplicating that file and um, never opening that main one because that is the, you know what I mean? Like that's the template. Um, but then every time you make a new one, that, like just duplicate it and then just use the new one. Because I don't know if you're able to use GarageBand specific, like to make templates. Um, but again, this is not a GarageBand specific video. And that would be something to definitely look into if you're a GarageBand girly. And uh, now we're going to go back and work on this song. Oh, I'm going to show you guys some basics of recording. Um, and it will probably be a part two. So please subscribe to my channel turn on your notifications, comment, make some friends down below. Be like, yo, I'm on Instagram. Hey, yada, yada, yada. We should be following each other and hyping each other up as we create music. Um, speaking of my new single, we'll keep going. It comes out in like two weeks. So please pre-save link in bio. Uh, part two of this video will be coming soon where we jump more into the details of recording. And I will see you back here on the audio.
this is why you should stack your vocal and make sure you just drag that down and go back to the beginning. Try it all over again. This, this is, is why you, you should stack, stack your vocal. Occasionally you'll get somebody in there that does not sound as accurate as they're supposed to. This is why you should stack your vocal. And every time you do this over and over again, you'll get into the habit of noticing those differences. This is why you should stack your vocal. Eventually you can start to replace the ones that don't do the job. <laughs> and this is why you should stack your vocal. It's not that a single vocal is bad. It can a lot of times give you the exact sound and the style that you're looking for. This is why you should stack your vocal. But sometimes stacked vocals sound a lot better, doubled, tripled, quadrupled, and I mean. This is why you should stack your vocal. Yeah.